All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Well, welcome to the show. Welcome to episode 477 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. We host Julian. Uh, we got Daniel Wheeze from the board on board today. Hi there. St. Louis KISS rolled out of bed, threw on his camera, and showed up <laughs> right as the clock was ticking down. Nice timing. Hardly rolled out of bed, but... <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what you call oh. sliding into home base. Oh, that was the last one here, though. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Ken, Ken is being uh, socially late, uh, so Ken, glad you could make it. You need, we do need five on this show. This is death match number thirteen, and of course, uh, yeah. can't forget Marcus Almighty, Mark. Mark, I do want to just ask you before we get into things. Um, you know, obviously the the bands on tour in Europe, they're they've just wrapped up Germany. Uh, they were in, I think, Manchester last night doing Glasgow, Glasgow my old hometown well not my hometown i lived there 92 to 97 i was up in Clydebank initially and then uh, we moved out to kilmacomb which is uh port glasgow greenock uh where i worked until i moved to the states so fond memories of that part of the world great food great people uh, my whole mom's side of the family is from glasgow so uh, you know obviously Nice to see the band wrapping things up there, and I hope everyone has a fantastic time at the shows because I've seen a lot of mates wearing makeup and smiling and not bitching, which is really cool. Now, Mark, the reason I was going to you was what's going on in terms of CDs, your Project Gemini stuff? Um, any news or updates for everyone that you just want to throw out before we get into things? Um, the last of the orders of the CDs that are going out on Monday. Uh, I was going to go out on Friday to send some of them, but my mom has gotten rather ill. I think she got some food poisoning or something. She's been uh, not too good for the last day or so. Right now I can report that she's better. She's upstairs resting. I was up with her last night till about 4 o'clock in the morning. She wasn't doing too hot, but uh, she, she's doing better now. Uh, I blame medical science on some of it because she went to the doctor and uh, they said that they gave her some new medications and she's already on like three pills already for different things. And it's just unbelievable the amount of pills they're making her take. And it's just, she just, I guess her stomach couldn't handle all the pills after all. She's just puked her brains out last night. But mm. uh, anyways, she's doing better now. I told her to stop taking that shit and just to talk, call the doctor and see what's going on with that. So uh, yeah, so she's doing better. She's strong. She has German blood in her, so she'll, she'll prevail. Uh, so, uh, but as far as the, the, uh, as far as the Project Gemini stuff, the, the CDs are going to be going out now. <laughs> yes. The Ezrin remix, uh, will be, go will be going out on Monday and I'm hoping tomorrow I'll be starting the vinyl pre-order for the vinyl version of the album. So nice. Well, good. Yeah. That's that's really cool. I, I want to give a shout out to the German Kiss Army, Danke schön, um, for the contributions. I put a, a blast out on uh, the Kiss News German Forum uh, for some contributions to Mass Hysteria, and I've gotten some very, very useful contributions. Cool. Um, so it's very much appreciated. Uh, Kiss Army France? Time to step up, guys. No, I, I do need still need a little bit of help in that realm. Um, I just don't have the local newspaper sources for that, those three shows, uh, plus the canceled one. So if you're able to assist, it'd be very much appreciated. If not, I do have some and enough to go with. So there we go. I do also want to thank everyone who's joining us live this morning on this wonderful non-sporty Saturday because I'm not watching the ashes anymore. I give up. Um <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of corrective action on the death matches because Julian math, actually Julian uh, skills meant that when we did the revenge round, I actually forgot to put, take it off into the hat. Um, I don't know how. I don't know why Lonnie didn't say something, so it's clearly all his fault. Yeah, wow. wow. Um, but it was, <laughs> I actually went back through the paperwork. Wow and checked yeah. and i actually <laughs> emptied out the uh tub full of little slips from these these episodes no take it off 
So we got to fix that. And the way to fix it is to um, unfortunately have to bring in some additional songs to go head to head from the first round. So we're extending the first round to make up for Julian's screw up. And that means we're going to go into the box set and a couple of, um, you know, reissues. So Love Gun had some additional tracks on it, uh, studio tracks, as did... I think it was Kiss 40. I can, can never remember had Rick on it. So we're just mm -hmm. going to throw all those into that, including Don't Touch My Ascot, because we were asked about that. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's you know, just a way to extend it. And then we're jumping straight into round two. I think I've got uh, 11 songs to go up against one another in that first batch. Mm -hmm. A lot of songs to get through still. Mm -hmm. uh, Henrik. What about Gene and the yellow truck? Well, it's not really a, a truck. It's more of a, um, I'm not sure what the hell it is. It's it's a little like utility cart. Cart. cart I mean, yeah. He is now using to get her. It's like a golf buggy for a demon. Yeah. I think it's so cool. And people <laughs> yeah, are photoshopping funny. that into all sorts. Of, I've not had a chance to do <laughs> any. Um, I do have a couple in mind really? to make my own. But uh, other people are really taking up that gauntlet and providing some really hilarious shit. So uh, his, <laughs> yeah, his mean yellow machine. I mean, yeah. All right. So let's get into Red Cup is 10 songs. And just going to pull a pair out at a time. And we'll see where this one goes. Then we'll see what other songs I forgot. <laughs> so straight out, Reputation which is the song off the Kiss 40 box set. Everyone's going, what the hell does that one sound like? Because I heard about 19 different versions of the demo over the years. So mm -hmm. Reputation is going up against Gene. Bad, bad, loving. Okay. Which is the original demo version of Calling Dr. Calling Love. Dr. Love, which mm -hmm. later split into Dr. Dr. Love and another version of Bad, Bad, Lovin', which was actually pretty cool because it had some like saxophone and um, great backing vocals. All right, Lonnie, you're up first. Bad, Bad, Lovin' or Reputation? Bad, Bad, Lovin's good. You know, it was, you know, I, when I, I first time I ever heard it was when I bought the box set and I was, you know, I was like, oh, wow, this is obvious. I mean, it's pretty obvious right away what it, what it is and what it became. Um, well, I enjoy it. I think I enjoy reputation better. Um, I think it's, I think reputation has a, is very kiss like for, for the mid to late seventies. You know, you can, you can definitely see it fitting on the love gun or, or an album right around that time. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go reputation. All right. I guess we got to make sure that Ken's vote counts on a Gene versus Gene matchup. All right, Ken. Reputation yeah, of Ken. bad, bad loving. And how many of you out there are trying to remember what these songs sound like? They're not exactly regular. I don't think they'll be playing them tonight. Yeah. Copyright ding. Copyright ding. Copyright ding. Easy. Easy. It's okay. So, yeah. uh, it's because it's a more danceable song. That's what he used to say. You know, what is it? The uh, American Bandstand. You know, it's, oh, it's, it, you, you can dance to it. That's why it's so good. But, uh, Didn't know you were a dancer, Ken. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> That's news. The voice uh, of reason on the dance floor. I'd yeah, like we'll do to some see break that. dancing right now here. Yeah. So, <laughs> cool. um, yeah, uh, I'm going to go with Reputation. Um, that one I think is a little bit more enjoyable because I, I know uh, the Bad Bad Love is kind of, of a mishmash, obviously. Um, part of it's Dr. Love and part of it's something else kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, Reputation. It, it's actually a, a very good illustration of Gene's blender mentality. So, mm -hmm. all right, Mark, you played some music. You're going to get to possibly cast a deciding vote or a contrarian view. Of course, you muted. Of course, you muted yourself. Sorry. There you go. Uh, just, I listened to both of them now because I was a little unsure. I know what the one is basically Dr. Love, right? And since sure. Dr. Love is one of my favorite songs from Kiss, uh, I would normally go for that, right? But 
I did listen to Reputation. Reputation is pretty good. But the reason why I'm not going to go with uh, Bad, Bad Love is because two things. One, it's not the true version of it. It is kind of an odd version of it. And when I called it up on YouTube to listen to it, this image came up. What's the image? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the destroyer okay. image. So as soon as I saw listening. Destroyer attached to it, I was like, there's no way I'm going to vote for that crap. So I'm going to be going Reputation because I showed it under a Love Gun banner. So Reputation it is. All right, Daniel, your vote doesn't count. Uh, it's so funny. Mark has really gone all the way in when it goes to <laughs> the Destroyer <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's getting worse and worse, you people out there. He is uh, in the deep end. He's at the deep end of the pool. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, the thing that stands out for me is actually the chorus from uh, Reputation. I mean, both these songs are kind of hard to remember. You haven't listened to them that much. But I do remember the chorus from Reputation. I think it's actually quite a good chorus. So I have to go to f f Reputation for me as well. Yep. I'm going to make it unanimous. I mean, wow. that version of Bad, Bad Lovin' is uh you know again it's formative and it splits into two but i do am are far more familiar with the later version of bad bad loving which was a song in its own right so it's not fair to even vote for that mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. reputation in, the, in this mm -hmm. sense so all right reputation is through um mark is in the cesspool thank you Andrew. <laughs> can i ban you yeah and uh <laughs> g hurley irish kiss army <clears throat> thank you for joining us all right, so up next, it's my life. The anthem that should have been a hit. Mm -hmm. The one song that so many Kiss fans think should have never been left off a Kiss album. And then it's the... I like this, Lonnie. Take it. Oh, no! <laughs> Terrible! <laughs> oh, boy. It's my uh -oh. life versus take... And this is all... Uh -oh. Um, I do want to thank the, the fan who was watching the episode who did point out that Take It Off had been mixed, missed. Um, and I can't browse while hosting. So um, if anyone else wants to try and find that. But let's start with Daniel. Uh, oh, that's the worst matchup you could find. Actually, I think it was good that you did some Julian math because I think uh, <laughs> this tune belongs in this kind of voting, you know? It's it belongs life. in this sort of yeah. matchup. Yeah, this matchup is really hard for me because I enjoy both songs. Mm -hmm. uh, take it off. I do like the riff. It's kind of Led Zeppelin esque. Uh, you know that da 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 da. Really good riff. Uh, Paul sings his ass off on the, that song, but it's my life. Uh, it's such a you know classic in. In a, a among true Kiss fans, uh, and um, I, if it's the early version, I think I have to lean towards that one. Uh, it's my life, but both but are not. great songs. It, it's the Psycho Circus version. The Is it the Psycho, Psycho Circus? Circus version? Okay, it's so the Psycho Circus. Remember version. how we were taken to task for our opinions mm. on Hotter Than Hell? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, it's the Psycho Circus version. Ah. Uh, so hard um i think i go take it off but i think both are great songs but but i go take it off because i i think it's my favorite paul song off of revenge uh i liked it live i like the way it sounded on the live three i know you didn't get it over there in, in america you, it was a bonus track for europe but but uh was it on the 30th anniversary version take it off on the vinyl I believe so. Yeah, I believe. believe. Yeah, it was, yeah. You, you, yeah, and it was on that um that a live box set that came out like in 06. Yeah. Oh, that okay. Live box yeah. set's great. I, I like that version. Um, so I, I go take it off, but either one is okay for me. Yeah, this this is really challenging, Mark. Um, it's my life from Psycho Circus versus mm -hmm. Take It Off, um, from your favorite producers. Yes. Third well, <laughs> see, here's the thing. I've always found It's My Life to be the great mystery of the KISS catalog. I mean, so many people have said that this song is fantastic and is one of their favorite songs and it's never been on any official KISS album release ever. And 
the fact that they tried so many times to put it on there. I mean, look at how many albums it appears on, you know, like a, a, a possible song to be added and it never gets on there. As far as Psycho Circus, as Julian has just mentioned, that they tried to put it on and it didn't get on there. And, you know, the other night I was doing a live stream and we played It's My Life from the Wendy O. Williams album and just remembered how just amazing that song is. And it's pretty much Kiss on there anyways as well, doing it pretty much with her. Uh, so I've always loved that song. Now, granted, I do like Take It Off as well. And, you know, back in the day when I was much younger and I saw, uh, you know, the, the video that accompanied it with all the strippers live on stage. I mean, who couldn't who couldn't agree that that was such a fantastic song to, uh, to, to vote for? But Julian mentioned a second ago a name that's going to taint it for me slightly, and that is Mr. Bob Ezrin, who touched this material. And, you know, while it is his best... Good while night, it is his best Mark. <laughs> you're at the album, deep end, Mark. You're, while you're, it is his best... You're record, over the edge. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go with It's My Life because Bob Ezrin didn't touch It's My Life. <laughs> he, he's on like the Titanic, like submergible <laughs> thing. Good <laughs> Lord. Uh, oh, my God. We need, we need some it's like here. Bob Ezrin is Lucifer himself. Like I can't even say <laughs> the Lucifer. name and Mark just bursts into flames. And literally, Bob Ezrin once cut in line in front of Mark at the supermarket. And he has <laughs> never forgotten. Cut him, cut him yeah. off at the DMV or something. <laughs> oh, just, to, just imagine some Toronto road rage. Mark pulls up to the light and looks over. <laughs> hey, if, if I ever meet that guy, in the, if I ever meet him in the subway, it's going to be bad. Bad news, then. Let me tell yeah. you. God. All right, Ken. You it's... Kick your dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's my life, or take it off, Ken. I'm going with uh, the anthem. It's my life. Yeah, that 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 had so much potential going going back. It's to me, it's a classic that never was a classic. I guess in kind of a weird way. Um, it should have been on Creatures originally. Um, it's just a matter of that. Um, and they should have continued to try to put it out, which they did, I guess, up to the Psycho Circus, um, which that production is a little bit too slick for me for that song. Um, but I think the full potential of that song uh, beats uh, Take It Off on any day. I just think it's, it's incredible that they didn't use it for Animal Eyes, you know, while the series. They could have. Lick it up, and, you whatever. Know, all, uh, Lick it up was kind of a strong album all the way through. Maybe one or two yeah. weeks song at, at the end. But Animalize, you know, the Gene stuff on Animalize, you could switch any of the Gene songs out for this one. It's a, it's a, it's a yeah. shame. Paul didn't want Gene to have another good uh, song. Probably go Paul's again. fault. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, blame but I blame Paul. It's I truth. Blame Paul. It's the truth. Yeah, so it was. I know a lot of fans are disappointed when the Creatures box set came out in Gene's vault, for that matter, that the version of um, It's My Life wasn't what they perceived studio clarity, like yeah. Ain't None of Your Business was on the Destroyer um, box. And what that does for me, and I, I did it in the, in the write-up on it, was I don't think that they even still have the multi-tracks. I think Gene took the multi-tracks with him when he did the Wendy album, and... They mm -hmm. never came back and they're owned by whoever the successor party is to Passport Records, mm -hmm. uh, w which is a real bummer because I, I think yeah. if we had the option to hear that in all its real glory, it, it might be a, a winner. But today, because we're voting about the 1998 version, yeah. which is not Ace, which is not Eric which is not really legitimate other than an attempt to recycle something. Well, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to take it off because again, what that stood for uh, as a 17 year old or however old I was in 92, oh, wait, 21, um, you know, was much more fun and it was valid and it was anthemic and it was, you know, a, a really fun song. And I'm not going to vote for, for it's my life in, 1998 i'm not making that hotter than hell mistake with this song which means and it also sets up lonnie to be the tiebreaker mm. you know wh which well, song we know going... we know what's going oh. on <laughs> like, so exciting huh yeah, what yeah. Say? the suspense i'm sure is killing you guys yep. but 
I like the version of It's My Life on the box set when it came out in 01. But the more I listen to it, the less I like it. Um, the, the, the drums on there are so generic. And it doesn't have much feel to it at all. So it is, it is, well, this is a good matchup. And it's probably a preview of some of the matchups to come as we get further down the road in these. Where we have two really good songs up against one another. Um, I love Take It Off, and I can't. I'm I'm embarrassed that I didn't realize it when we did the revenge episode that we didn't do Take It Off. <laughs> right. So it it's 100 Take It Off. It, it's such a it's such a great song. Like Julie's talking about when it came out, how old we were, and I was, you know, younger than than that even. And I loved it, and you know, and it's it's so it's so fun. It's just it's just a fun kiss song. It's total. It's just a it's a total kiss song. Uh, really quickly, just in case you're wondering, I did some quick research. Uh, Passport, I think, got bought out and taken to MCA Records. Which is owned by, I think that's back in-house at Universal. It yeah. doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that the tape survived in the vaults or didn't yeah. get burned. So thanks, Mark. So there's still a chance. Hey, Joel, thanks for joining. So what albums? We're doing scraps because Julian forgot to take it, uh, take it off when we did the revenge round. So we're adding in uh, stuff from the box sets and studio tracks that have been added on to other releases over the years. And then we're going to jump into uh, round two. We'll do the thanks first, for your like, support, th- Joel. We'll do like the first 10 songs. All right. Next up is Time Traveler. Oh, that wonderful song versus Ain't That Peculiar, which is actually mm. a cover. It was not written by Eric Carr. I don't know if they ever got sued for that, but that's a Smokey Robinson and crew um, song that was clearly used as a scat vocal to try and find a melody for Little Caesar. So uh, two box set, two of the better, actually, box sets, um, songs. And Mark, let's start with you. Time Traveler, and none of these are touched by Ezrin. You'll be happy. Yeah, so this is going to be actually on the merit of the music this time. So... uh, well, it was as well the other ones, but you know. No, it wasn't. It was hate. <laughs> so, uh, funny enough, when we got the that box set years back, and Time Traveler was on it, I listened to it, and I was like, at first, I was kind of like taken aback by it because it's so keyboard heavy. I was like, wow, like this is really like Casio keyboard ish like keyboards there. And after a while, it kind of started to grow on me a bit, and. I think this is the era. I don't know if uh, if um, Daniel will agree with me on this or not, but because we're both big Paul Stanley guys, and I have to admit that I think this is the era where Paul Stanley's vocals were at its absolute zenith, where he uh, he could sing anything and everything, anything high, anything low, and Time Traveler was one of those songs where I think you know if it was decided to go on a record, he would have probably sung it even better than how he sang it on this demo. Uh, it's it's a great example of his singing. Sure, it's a little keyboard heavy, uh, but it does have some interesting Bruce Kulick guitar soloing. I think, if I'm not mistaken on that, I think he did do a solo on that. Uh, There is a drum machine on there, but uh, you know what? I I think I'm going to go with Time Traveler because Ain't That Peculiar, while I want to support Eric Carr, to me, Ain't Ain't That Peculiar wasn't that catchy a song to me. It's just a pretty bluesy song. It's just like a really... You know, vanilla generic song. So I, I, I think Time Traveler, even in its most basic presentation, this demo form, I think is a stronger song. All right, Time Traveler. Your appreciation of good songwriting is noticed, Lonnie. Time Traveler or Peculiar? Um, it's Time Traveler for me. I, I thought that song was really catchy. I still do. Um, ain't that peculiar is good and I and I like Eric Carr, but just looking at it song for song, I think Time Traveler is just superior. Um everybody always talks about it. it sounds like it should be like the montage of some kind of 80s movie or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what Rocky. everybody always that's what like everybody says. Like, yeah, it sounds like a rocky thing, or you know, maybe it belongs in Back to the Future or something like that, even. I don't know. <laughs> so but it, it's good, like Mark said, it's very keyboard heavy. Um, but it's catchy and you listen to it, you'll have yourself, you'll find yourself singing it the rest of the day where you really don't, you know, ain't that peculiar is good, but I, I don't think I've ever had that song stuck in my head. So yeah. it's, it's time traveler All for right. sure. Daniel. 
I'm such a sucker for uh, you know 80s theme songs. <laughs> you know, every, every year you get the 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 summary of what you've listened to when when you go to Spotify. And every time I got like the the soundtrack from Rambo, the soundtrack <laughs> yes. from from yeah, it's a good song, it's a good song. Soundtrack from Rocky yes. and you know all of that. So 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 time travel is really up my alley. That's something I really do enjoy. And you know, they ate that 87 tape that Paul Stanley did had a few good songs on it. I don't even think that Time Traveler was the best one. I always always enjoyed Sword and Stone the most, but Time Traveler is right up there. It's a, it's a good song and like Mark said, you know, the vocals are incredible. And um, Sword and Stone is one of my absolute favorites that never made it to an album and um, you you know you had that other group doing Sword and Stone, but it, it wasn't the same without Paul's vocals. Paul's vocals was the main thing on Sword and Stone, and it is on Time Traveler. No one can touch him. So uh, Time Traveler for me. Ken. Yeah, well, Time Traveler is not one of my favorite. You know, I don't know kind of whatever hidden no, songs. Gene. It's not um, a Gene song. Yeah. It's not a Gene song. No, but uh, I don't like ain't, ain't that ain't, well peculiar that so much either. Uh, yeah, it is kind of a ripoff. So. Um, and it's just a okay kind of song, you know, it's background music for me. Um, so yeah, time traveler works better. It's, it's, it's kind of, it feels so dated to me, uh, listening to it. It's that sound at the time, but, uh, it's a much better song than, uh, ain't that peculiar. Yeah. And I despise time traveler, but <laughs> I have but, never like yeah. I have never liked it. it. It Ken nailed it. It's dated, but it, again, it's just another illustration that Crazy Nights needs to have a deluxe, super deluxe box set because there's a yeah. shit ton of fantastic extra material and work tapes from that album that would just be absolutely perfect, m married with a live show um, that hadn't been released. So um, I'm going Time Traveler simply because it's a it's still an incredible vocal performance, even if it's not to my taste. And it shows Paul writing songs in a area outside of the normal sort of kiss realm. And ain't that peculiar it is just a, a, a music piece with essentially a scat vocal. So um, I, I like the other versions that uh, can't me can't stop messing with your work, whatever. Um, oh, and Little Caesar, you know. Obviously, very yeah. good. All right, let's move on. That's unanimous. Time traveler it is. And then we are going to start with Ken first on this. Uh oh. <laughs> I, hope it's it's G. G. I hope it's two hope Gene it's songs. G versus G. Probably going to yeah. be two Gene's. Uh, no, don't touch my ascot. <laughs> there's a there's a classic. There there's a winner. This is gonna be <clears> tough. <throat> what, what's it up against? Shit sandwich. Um. God, these are all so tight. <laughs> so secretive. Mad dog. All right, that makes it mm. easy for Ken. Mad <clears throat> dog versus Ascot. Really? Yeah. I I do <clears throat> apologize for putting Ascot in, but why I the hell not? You know, Ascot's kind of, it's fun, you know, in its own little thing. That's one way uh, to describe it. It's part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> take, it's take fun. A it's not a, like it's it nothing, too. anything, yeah, it's nothing, anything like you know, Kiss at all, you know, the normal Kiss that we know. So, um, yeah, Mad Dog, I mean, you know, Mad Dog, yeah, it's a Gene deal, yeah, but it's not one of his better ones, um, unfortunately. It's just kind of, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's in, it's an interesting song, um, but I'll have to go with Mad Dog because it's just because it's not it's not Ascot. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, well, I think Mad Dog is a perfect example of what is wrong with Gene Simmons' songwriting. It's boring, lethargic, nothing happens. Wow. Uh, so I, I never liked that one. On the other hand, uh, Don't Touch My Ascot. Actually, I think um, 
reached out to some new fans. You know, the Scooby-Doo movie. You know, as you know, I'm a teacher. And some of the kids actually discovered Kiss through Scooby-Doo. Uh, and that song is kind of fun. So, uh, or if you can call it a song. But just because I think Mad Dog is such a perfect example of what is wrong with Gene Simmons' songwriting when he doesn't get any external help. Uh, I have to go with Don't Touch My Ascot. Wow. The Baby Shark Brigade are going to be happy with that choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mad Dog is just terrible. All right, Mark. Huh. Well, I mean, Daniel did make a couple of interesting points. Uh, you know, Mad Dog is horrendous. It's like a terrible song. I mean, it's just that part from Flaming Youth just extremely slow da, 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 and really bad vocals rawr, rawr, like just, just terrible <laughs> you know it's like it's, 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 it's absolutely terrible Crazy. now now we have multiple harmonies in don't touch my ascot okay mm -hmm. it it is harmonized very well and and the great thing about it too is that it's not very long I mean, it's in and out before you before you get. That's truly, what she said. <laughs> yes, the, the, before oh. you're before you're truly, oh. you know, shocked by its, you know, nice, really. absurdness. It's done. So, one hand makes me want to say, should I go for Ascot? And the other one's, one's going, well, but that would be crazy if I went with that because, quite frankly, don't touch my Ascot. Sounds like something that. Bob Ezrin would have recommended Kiss do. Like, this is our new direction, guys. We should do Harmonized Barbershop and your next album. I can totally see Bob trying to pull, pull them that way on the, on another Kiss record. So I, I sense Bob's influence on that, so I'm going to go with Mad Dog. Yeah, but it was a nice kind of hearkening back to Phantom, which did have a Barbershop quartet. Yes, that's true. All right, Lonnie. Yeah, it does sound. Touch, don't touch my Ascot. Sounds like it should have been on a uh, Kiss Meets the Phantom soundtrack. Mm. Actually, um, I don't really care for Mad Dog, but I have to pick it over Don't Touch My Ascot because it's like Ken said. I have to pick Mad Dog because it's not Don't Touch My Ascot. Basically, <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> I don't really care for either song, but. One is worse than the other. Daniel is a true rebel today with this one. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I'm going to go with Mad Dog because I actually like the vocal um, when he's just shouting. I mean, it's mm. kind of it's primal and it's fun and it's entertaining. And Don't Touch My Ascot is shit. <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it served it served its purpose in a cartoon, but oh, uh, sure. it certainly yeah. isn't something I consider serious. Yeah, but Mad Dog did nothing. Became flaming youth with Bob Ezrin's help. Yeah, and we know what oh, we all know what Mark think about that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. right. It's but it was uh, the, the worst. worst. Don't tell time. Mark; he'll change his vote. Yeah, I'll change his vote. <laughs> was, was it not the first single from uh, Destroyer? Yeah. What did it do? Or, nothing. Or was that shouted out loud. I can't remember. All right. Yeah. So next up, much too soon, which is uh, the extra mm -hmm. studio song off the Love Gun. I like much too deluxe. Soon versus a really cool song that i didn't actually know existed when the box set came out don't you hesitate a nice mm -hmm. hybrid between dress to kill mm -hmm. and destroyer um, by paul stanley i believe don't you hesitate versus <coughs> excuse me um much too soon lonnie mm -hmm. much too soon is much too soon to me is forgettable while don't you hesitate is is more is much more fun it sounds like it could be on dress to kill um it, it would kind of fits in to, to the vein where they were right there and that's you know a great great era for the bands um when, when you put this list out i had to go back and listen to much too soon because it is that forgettable to me it, it it really is it didn't doesn't stick with me at all so it's it's don't you hesitate for me because i think i think don't hesitate it's a fun song so it's kind of an easy pick yeah i'm gonna just i'm gonna copy what lonnie said again because he nails it it's a fun song and it is really catchy and uh much too soon i can't remember i yeah it, it I, is I it's just completely forgettable uh daniel yeah even though i, I like the other version of 
Ken going at the the DJ. No, no, that was a, that's that's Mark. our DJ. That's Mark over there. <laughs> that's Mark. Okay, uh, <laughs> but I think um, don't you hesitate is good, but I like the other version better. You know, uh, smoke. It's actually smoke. the same song, uh, almost. Uh, so smoke would have blown the other one away, but still. Don't you hesitate? It's way better than the other one. So, uh, and I always loved the, you know, the Paul Stanley tracks off of Dress to Kill were so cool. I like all of them. You know, Rock Bottom, Lover All I Can. Everyone is pure pop perfection. So, this could have been something for the album, but I do enjoy Smoke better. But, but I, I'll go and don't you hesitate. All right. Uh, Mark. Yeah, so I was just refreshing myself on much too soon. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting harmonized vocals there. Gene singing in more normal voice there. Uh, <laughs> but I have to agree that I think uh, Don't You Hesitate is just a much better song, much more catchier, memorable. Uh, just everything about it, I think, is much, much stronger. Uh, I'll, I'll give Gene credit. This one was a little bit more better thought out, I thought, than most of his dribble that he puts as bonus tracks. But the, I still don't think it, it's, it compares to Don't You Hesitate. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's Gene's fault. I just think that when they need bonus tracks, he's actually got them. You know, because <laughs> most most of Paul's songs were recorded. Yeah. You know, so... Um, he doesn't write a lot of extra stuff, Paul, it seems. Yeah. Which, uh, there we go. All right, Ken, your vote doesn't count, so you can vote for Gene. Yeah, I was going to vote for Gene anyway. Um, I like that song much too soon a lot. I think it's different. Uh, I think it's a, actually, for me, it's memorable. Uh, it's it's different, and I think the reason it wasn't used because it's not your typical Kiss song, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It hasn't doesn't have a Kiss sound, but it <clears throat> has a pop song. I think it's great. I think it's a really cool song. I really, really enjoy it. Um, and don't it's not you hesitate. Terrible. No, no, it's not terrible. And don't you hesitate? It's okay. It kind of falls in with uh, Paul Stanley's at that time. You know, he wrote a lot of the same type of songs. Uh, they sounded alike. You know, um, the styling that he did at the time. And I think it's a good song too. But I, I just enjoy the Gene song better or more. All right. Well, that's it. We are through catching up and correcting the take it off mistake. Reputation. Take it off. Um, time Traveler. Mad Dog. And don't you hesitate. Have moved into the round two pile. We're going to get jump straight into round two here um, because we should have been doing that today anyway if I hadn't screwed up. So, all right. Here we go. Anything can happen in round two. Yeah, the song from the same album. Oh up to crazy. Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. And we're starting off with get Gene's nuts. A World. <laughs> These nuts. A World Without Heroes. Oh. Okay. Ooh. That made it through. One World from Ken. Yeah. What do you mean that? We had to have an album. Made, made it through. Did it make it through? God, yeah, that's but it's it. up against oh. Turn on the Night. Oh, okay. Oh, mm. that hurts. Hmm. All right, so we are starting with Daniel. Actually, this is a hard pick for me hmm. because I do enjoy both songs. They're so completely different. Turn on the Night is a classic 80s tune. You know, it's everything that the 80s were, up-tempo, fun. You know, go out and have some fun and crap lyrics. World Without Heroes on the other side is... Actually, the lyrics are pretty good. Uh, it's a somber song from from Gene, uh, a great vocal from Gene, and uh, one of the few songs that I can listen to from The Elder. Uh, so this is a hard pick. I know a lot of you guys enjoy Turn of the Night. I think it's a bit overrated, actually. Uh, so I, I'll go with the ban, Gene Where's song. my ban hammer? <laughs> <laughs> right over here, man. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, Gene for me. I'll, I'll go Gene. I, I think it's a very good ballad, even though I can't stand the video when the tear is dropping from his <laughs> eye. You know, it's so, <laughs> ah. But um, 
it's a great <laughs> song and it actually sounded great when they did it un unplugged as well I, I enjoy the unplugged version even more than the original. Oh, the unplugged version is glorious yeah yeah i, I, I will agree. say that i'm i'm going next after what you said i mean put them up um turn on the night by a mile for me should have been a hit should have been the first single a world without heroes was a cheap weak attempt to copy beth mm -hmm. amen there. brother there I like and, it, and it has nothing to do with ezra because it's a great song it's a beautiful song it's beautifully recorded it's beautifully executed it's beautifully crafted mm -hmm. but it is still gene trying to be Peter Chris, just as on the previous album, Paul Stanley had tried to do the same thing with Shandy. So it's contrived. But turn on the night, I love. All right, Mark, hate on Ezrin. This, well, this is before we even get to Ezrin. I mean, this song, as everybody, Jeez. as everybody knows, okay, yeah. is, is one of my songs that hit me right here every time I hear it. It, it has a special moment to me. I said it a thousand times and you're not going to go through it again. When I first went to California, blah, 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 blah. And I heard it on the radio. It's a great song. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, the lyrics are sort of tacky and cheesy. But you know what? That's part of the appeal of it. And like Lonnie used to say, this is Kiss. What What isn't tacky and cheesy about their songs? You know, that if, if you're complaining about that, then you, don't, don't, then you shouldn't like Kiss, period. Okay? So I think that it's a great song. It represents everything I love about that sort of 80s music. Incredible. And, you know, th that other song is just, I, I don't like it. I never liked it. I mean, it's it's written nicely, okay? It sounds good. It's, it's a good recording. Okay, I'll give Bob that. But, I mean, once again, in Bob's stupidity, he gets all these outside people involved with it, you know, involved and it just turns into something that just shouldn't have been recorded again okay it, it, it all of the elder was sort of an odd record we have to agree okay so and world without heroes is just something that just i don't think of kiss when i think of that song okay when i hear turn on the night i think of it and of course i blame bob ezrin because he always fucks up kisses material ron nevison wasn't wow. that good either but he was bad. I'll take I'll take Nevison over Bob any oh. day of the week. No, any no, day, I do that. any oh, day. Not me. Uh, hey, Ultimate yeah. Sin. Come on, Ultimate Sin's actually very good. I, it I depends on the know. band to me. Yeah, Revenge. Style. I mean, Revenge blows revenge. all the, the <laughs> albums away. All right, Ken, have your word, have your say. <laughs> this is a Paul. Uh, uh, a world without heroes was every bit of your heart or my heart, whatever it's called. Uh, he wrote that actually, right? Yeah, that was that was uh, Paul's idea. Pretty much, record, pretty and, much. And they so. recorded in Toronto during the second session. So it's not a Gene song, obviously. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, I do like a world without heroes. I, I do enjoy it, but uh, do I think that should have been a number one? No, it shouldn't have been. A, it could have been a minor hit, maybe. Um, but not even that, I guess. Turn on the night is just a, you know, anthem type song. Uh, a very catchy, good song. Yeah, it should have been released as the first single. It should have made the charts. It should have been a hit, in my opinion. But it's just everyone hated Kiss, so <laughs> <laughs> it's the way it's the way it goes. Um, it's not gonna go anywhere. But I'll go with Turn on the Night. It's just wow. a really great, catchy song. I feel like the Emperor you, in Star Wars when we get to have Ken vote against Gene. Lonnie. Such a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> good, good. Turn to the dark side. <laughs> good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like this matchup because it illustrates how different and how diverse the Kiss catalog is. So we can have a song like Turn On The Night go up against um, A World Without Heroes. And I can still sit here and debate it back and forth. Two songs that are so different from each other by the same band, but I still like both of them. And that's that's one of the great things about being a Kiss fan is their catalog is so diverse from one spectrum to the other. While I like World Without Heroes... We are talking about the studio versions and not the MTV Unplugged. We can't let that stray our our votes. Very so well I, said. 
because of because Ooh. we are are talking studio versions, um, Turn on the Night is much more fun and more anthem like, and it just sounds again like Mark was saying. It just sounds like a Kiss song. It's 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 fun. It's catchy, and like Julian said, it should have been the first single off Crazy Nights. It's it it, it could have been. It, you know, has had a potential of being a big hit for the band. So turn on the night. Would have been a better single than Kiss's Carlton dance. All right. Um, Daniel. <laughs> I've already stated my argument. He already a world, said. A world without heroes. World without heroes. I was the only one. <laughs> Ken let me down. Oh, yeah. I went, I went out of we, order. We Mark, still Mark, 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 who I didn't go to, right? Well, no, you, you, no, you did already. I, went I, to I, I think we're done. You went to everybody. Yeah. All right. Julia, Julia, math strikes again. Yeah, so <laughs> Julia, Mark, maybe, Mark, wait a minute. Daniel didn't go. He can vote. I, again. I wanted to turn on tonight. <laughs> we can get an extra vote. <laughs> Do I get a second vote? <laughs> yeah. Lonnie went with turn on the no, night. No, this is <laughs> yes. Vote early Daniel and went, Daniel went with heroes. <laughs> Everyone except Daniel. Mind. All right. Yes. I just want to make sure I don't screw this up. All right. Yeah, turn on the night goes late. through. <laughs> Too late. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate your support. <laughs> Like, doctor, I hope we don't pull the wrong kidney. Too late. <laughs> you didn't need that anyway. He's got two. All right, all hell's breaking loose. Mm -hmm. He's getting good, actually. This is this is going to be interesting. Oh, versus making love. All hell's breaking wow. loose versus making oh, love. Boy, that's getting harder now. Sucky, These are going to get match harder. up there. <laughs> These are going to get harder as we go along. All hell's breaking loose. I so I can pay attention to get things right. <laughs> I like all hell's breaking loose. I like making love. Mm. But I'm going to go making love. I think it's a better song at the end of the day. Um, all hell's breaking loose is fun. But making love is just classic kiss on rock and roll over. And it's it ace freely and Peter Chris, it's it's superior in my opinion. When if I got if I had to choose one, damn. What about that uh, revenge lineup doing it? Ooh. Mm. Ooh, that's good too. But I'm, don't 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 try to sway my vote, Julian. I got I'm some, not. I'm making like make, making love when they. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they'll even, they'll All right, Mark. Even higher. Well, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with making love. For one main reason, I mean, for, number one, it's a great song, okay? But Making Love was the first song that actually justifies Peter Chris having that enormous drum kit of his. Never in any of the other songs that he had played in did he need a huge kit, except for this one. He, has a -do 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 -do. he actually uses every drum. He might as well have used a four-piece for everything else in his career because he never used the toms half the time. And in live, he has this enormous drum set, and the only time he ever used it is for the drum solo and that song. So let's go with Making Love. All right. Ken. Man, <clears throat> this is difficult. Um, but I'd, on, on a given day, I'd rather listen to All Hell's Breaking Loose even though I love making, you know, making love is a really good song. Uh, man, yeah, all hell's breaking loose. I'm gonna go with because it's. I just love the riff. I love the song. I love the gang vocals of it all. I, I just, I just really, really like that song. So it's one of my favorite songs off of Lick It Up. So I gotta go with that. Even though Making Love is a, a great song off of Rock and Roll Over, it, it's a great rocker. Um, but uh, I'd rather hear All Hell's Breaking Loose in concert than Make It Love. Yeah, when I got into Kiss, uh, Rock and Roll Over was one, another one of the early albums that I got soon after. And that is one of the songs that jumped out at me then. Absolutely mm -hmm. spectacular. I loved it then. I love it to this day. It's great in concert and on all the archive bootlegs and, and such. But All Hell's Breaking Loose, Loose, I'm with you. It's got a swagger to it that was just really yeah. fun. It was also stylistically different. It was fresher to me at the time that I became a fan. Um, and it just means that little bit more to me with it being basically an Eric Carr Eric musical Carver. idea yeah. that was completed by the whole was band. It? So it's really representative of that era. 
but I just, I love its mood when they start playing it. It doesn't translate as well live, uh, but mm. we're not talking about live. True. So uh, all hells, which is going to give Daniel the tie-breaking vote. Uh -oh. The riff alone, the riff alone on making love beats every, the crap out of all has breaking loose. I think Amen. the main riff, the main riff in "Making Love," is one of the best Paul Paul riffs of all time. Zeppelin rip off. I, yeah, maybe it might be. I don't know. I'm not that into Zeppelin, but but that's a cool, great riff, and that's why "Making Love" has been played all through the years. And break uh, all has breaking loose has not been played a whole lot. Um, even though I do appreciate Eric Carr getting a you know a writing credit and. The riff in All Has Breaking Loose is pretty memorable as well. Uh, the rapping part is, you know, it's kind of fun. Uh, and when I first heard it, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I still think it's a good song. But, you know, Making Love is a classic. Uh, it works so well uh, live. It's hard to separate the studio version from, you know, the experience hearing it live. Uh, my making love is actually the revenge era making love, you know, like in South America 94. Such mm. a great song. But even on the studio album, it sounds great. So making love for me. Okay, I can't sway your opinion to change your vote <laughs> with the wonderful music video for All Hells Breaking Loose, which had girls <laughs> with swords, land yes. pirates. No. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, making love. <laughs> Is through, and that's probably the right choice, but uh, that, that's just another one of the fun lineup. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, what a great riff, though. You know, both yeah. of them, two, yeah. two great riffs. Yeah, it ain't gonna get well, it probably isn't gonna get any easier. Oh, well, certainly nope. won't with this one. Shout it out loud. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, yeah. we already know Mark's voting for this, whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. It could be another destroyer. Wrong one. That was a song from the previous <clears throat> round that shouldn't be in there already. Britney okay, gonna shout it out loud versus Firehouse. Oh, oh. Mm. Mark. Wow. Wow. Okay. There's one for Firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, Firehouse. It's a song that I think studio version. Yeah, and, and yeah, I know, and I was going to get to that. Yeah. Is that while Firehouse Live is you know a, a, an important song for Kiss, especially during the era where they used it for his fire breathing for Gene. There, uh, the problem with the first album, and while I do love the first album, is that that production is pretty soft. You know, the, the guitars are pretty tame oh, yeah. sounding. The tempos are very slow, mm. especially on that studio version. It's pretty, you know, lackluster, to put it nicely. Uh, again, Shout It Out Loud is on that album that I despise and loathe. That album. Uh, but I won't even say its name. You know, <laughs> yeah, I won't even, I won't even acknowledge it by it. saying it by name. It. Uh, but I have to say that if there's... There's always been two songs on this album that I always kind of gave a little bit of a pass on. And that's, uh, you know, King of the Nighttime World and this one. Uh, in fact, if, if people who follow me in my Project Gemini stuff uh, know that I actually did a cover of this song as mm -hmm. part of my bonus tracks, which goes to show you that while I hate the album and can't stand the man who's behind the making of the album, the song itself, I think, isn't that bad. And it's the only song that could probably get away with the piano that's in it. Otherwise, the piano that's on the rest of the album makes me want to gag and hurl. So I think that this song overall is the winner, in my opinion. Wait, what was that? Shout it out loud. <laughs> Say the whole thing again. Shout, shout it, out, it loud out loud was the winner. The winner. Okay. Shout it out loud was the winner. Sure. Shout. You couldn't believe your ears. I, I just wanted to make him say it yeah. twice because I knew it hurt. Uh, Lottie. Um, I like Firehouse. It is really good. And the uh, the studio version of it's good too, but Shout It Out Loud is just such a classic Kiss song. And it's 
it's always such a, a great part of the show when they do it live and it in my opinion it sounds great on destroyer um i i think Ed, ezra did a great job with it i think that you know it, it's it's the version of shouted out loud that that i fell in love with is the version on destroyer and you know the Destroyer is one of the reasons I became a KISS fan. So it, it shattered out loud for me, no doubt. All right. Ken? Yes, well, I like Firehouse and the uh, – I do like the studio version of it, but it is it is, it is too slow. Uh, I love the bass in it. I used to crank it up uh, on my stereo when I had that album. When first got the album, I remember, man, that bass is so great in that song. Um, and uh, – the vocals but uh yeah it was much better when it became alive um but shout out loud is just one of their best anthem you know songs um one of the better ones um and i love it every time i hear it i'm happy to hear it i'm happy to hear it on studio i'm happy to hear it in concert it's just a great great song perfect kiss anthem party song so that wins for me all right three for shout daniel i'm looking forward to hearing both these songs in four days when i'm uh, uh, going yeah. to a kiss concert and the day after i will hear both of them as well uh two great classics uh firehouse the go-to version for me was always the alive one version i really enjoyed that one i remember actually listening to alive for the first time and the first song that stood out to me was firehouse so i uh, immediately liked that one uh, but when it, when we talk about studio versions i have a hard time with almost every version on the first two albums i think they are like ken said a bit slow lethargic uh, there are always better versions if you look uh, at the live records and so on uh, but i have to uh, second lonnie i think bob esman did, did a great job on shout it out loud on the studio version uh, i think it's been unmatched ever since i think you it's hard to do a better version i, I really love that version and it's as stand it has stood the test of time and it's a great song and it always worked and they even played it on howard stern when they had you know to play two or three songs kiss they did rock and roll right you talk to say that and i think they did shout it out loud so even to kiss it's a it's a great classic and to me as well so shout it out loud all right, we're nearly unanimous here. Um, and this is where the live version really makes a difference. I've never been a fan of Shout It Out Loud. But mm. over the end of the road tour, I've really enjoyed the shit out of it. Um, so go figure. Uh, but Firehouse, I only like live. It's really turgid right. on the first album. Mm. I was l watching ABC in concert. And oh, yeah, that version. That's a fantastic version. Um, but shout it out loud. A couple of folks have talked about it. Crispiness, you know, pure pop magic. There you go. Uh, it really is. It's catchy. It's a sing a clap and clap along. It's fun. It may not have fire breathing, but it's a well-constructed song. Uh, you know, you we're unanimous. Shout it out loud. Wow. Firehouse yeah. just got, firehouse just got shit canned. Yeah. Mm. Go figure that. <laughs> All right. It was just worth it to have Mark go for a destroyer song. Like that. That's all we, that's what we live for. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and I want to take the opportunity while I'm unwrapping these freaking rappers to thank everyone for joining us live today and joining in the conversation with your picks yes. and comments. All right. Here we go. Heaven's on fire. Mm. Oh, here we go. Oh, Versus up against. Let's put the X. Yes. <laughs> All right. I get to go first on that one. Um, yeah. Let's heaven's on fire. <laughs> it's it's a, it, it's a no brainer. It's one of, you know, the classic kiss songs of the 1980s and unmasked era. And uh, let's put the X in sex may get me up in my head, but it ain't a classic. Uh, Daniel. Right. Yeah, same for me. Heavens of Fire was the first song I heard from Kiss, like many over here in Sweden. It was a, a huge hit. And uh, still to this day, I enjoy the studio version. They've tried. Actually, this is 
one of the few times that, that the studio version actually tops the live version. Uh, you know, well, I see they did uh, Heavens of Fire on that one, but I think the studio version tops that one. And once again, it has to do with Paul's vocals, uh, great vocals on that one. And it's just pure classic and good Bon Jovi songs. Yeah. Uh, but Heavens of Fire, so simple, but so good. It's in my top 10 of all time. So I go Heavens on Fire. All right. You might as well vote for the song that contributed to the shredding of Paul Stanley's voice by him performing <laughs> this live until, what, 92? Uh, Lonnie. Yeah, I, I think we're all going to have like the same opinion here that, you know, well, X, let's put the X in sex is, is a fun song. Firehouse is, I mean, Firehouse. Heavens on Fire <laughs> is so great. Um, Heavens on is, Firehouse. <laughs> it's such a classic 80s kiss song that it, it it's a slam dunk that gets heavens on fire all right ken <laughs> do i even need that vote i mean right. yeah well, heavens no on you fire. don't it's, it's uh, heavens no, on fire is already won but it's no brainer heavens on fire is is a classic and all right, X mark. Is not. <laughs> ken, ken yeah. says it's a no-brainer mark yeah i mean it uh, Heavens on Fire is is great. I mean, I've always lo loved that song. I mean, musically it's pretty simple, but just like Daniel yeah. said, it's the vocals that make that song. I mean, Paul's singing on it is just amazing. You know, it's too bad that you know. And this one of the great mysteries to me about Kiss is most of their career when they started, they were tuned in E flat, and they were playing. Why in God's name did they tune up to E standard in their '80s career and we'll play these songs? I mean, but it but it just ruined Paul's. If they would have kept it in E flat, maybe he would have lasted a lot longer. Maybe. You never know. No, because he oversang everything he got his hands on, and and it's majestic <laughs> what he did. Uh, you know, I still love you. That was mm -hmm. brutal. Every time I look at you, look how many times he did that for MTV Unplugged. You know, as well during rehearsals. He and all just, the raps. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, what are you going with? You went with X. No, I won with the heavens on fire. <laughs> you, you I, got, I always always got to check with you. I mean, you're you're, you're the you're the outlier. <laughs> Wild card. Yep. All right. <laughs> Up next is the trade. Mm. Yes, the trade mm. actually made it into this round. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, the trade. It is, but what's it up against? Yeah, yeah but what's it up against? Right. Nowhere to run. Uh, oh. <laughs> all right, maybe Ken. nothing, no brainer, maybe. All right, yeah, Ken. okay, uh, yeah, Nowhere to Run is the best of those uh, killer songs, uh, the best one out of the four. Always been a great song, so fantastic song. Uh, Betrayed is a good song, but nothing that can compare to Nowhere to Run, so that's it. <laughs> Simple and sad. Nowhere yeah, to run, it. huh? All right, Mark. Yeah, this is one of those songs that I really, really liked the first time I heard it, Nowhere to Run. It, it, it's such a great uh, combination of acoustic guitar playing and electric playing. It reminds me very much of uh, Paul's solo 78 album, uh, The Night You Belong mm -hmm. to Me. I mean, it has a very similar sort of structural and compositional styling to that song. Uh, you know, and if you if, and if you stumble on a good idea, you know, why not just rip it off once more for another song? And I think it's a it's a great song. I definitely think it's it's the stronger of the two songs. So let's I'm gonna go with that song for sure. Which one? <laughs> Nowhere to run. Okay, I'm just, I'm just making absolutely sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is for my benefit. You know how challenged I am with this shit, Lonnie. <laughs> um, in order to run is 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 good. I, I kind of said I think it's it's probably my favorite off those those killer tracks and and betrayed is is good as well. Um, one of the better songs of Hot and Shade. Um, but nowhere to run's better at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This this really isn't much of a matchup when you think about it, Daniel. I think it's it's mind blowing that Paul Stanley could come up with four songs in that little amount of time after the Elder, after completely 
you know, missing out on the elder on every song he did. Uh, he managed to do these for, I think, pretty good, or some of them really great songs on, on Killers. I think that, that's just mind blowing. They were just off the rails when it comes to the elder. Uh, I know some guys like the elder, crazy. But um, <laughs> uh, but 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 I think it's incredible. I, I would have yeah, seen I like a, it. I, 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 elder, when I when I heard the <laughs> Killers album for the first time, I always wanted to have like four Gene songs as well. For those four. No, you boys, don't. Not not from what he was offering up for those uh, sessions. Maybe. <laughs> With little, he always needs a little help in order to be, you know, excellent. So he, he could have maybe maybe he could have met Vinny and did some great stuff. But uh, Nowhere to Run is such a good song. Uh, it's mm. such so unfortunate they never managed to play that live. They did it on a cruise once, oh, a bit, thank, a bit, a bit too late. Bob and Bruce did. Yeah, right. Uh, that's good. Bruce, Bruce has done a lot of great songs. I actually just before the show, I listened to their version of Secretly Cruel, such a cool live version. Mm. But um, Nowhere to Run for me. Yeah, I wish he'd take that band into the studio and do covers of that and do a live album. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm nowhere to run. Uh, fantastic stuff. All right. Uh, just to keep us moving mm. along. Let me know. <laughs> then you let Versus me know. fits like a glove. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is one hell of a contract. Daniel. Yeah. Daniel's so Daniel. 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 Daniel, go ahead and go. Daniel. Yeah. Let me know. Maybe we should do that uh, <laughs> harmony singing all together. And then you let me know. Because then we sound yeah. like touch your ass, God. Hon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, let me know was never a classic to me. I think it's one of the absolute hmm. weakest song on that album, for sure. Um, no. And of course, it has gotten a lot of love through the years because it was is what it's one of their early songs. If this would have been on Hot in the Shade, everyone oh, not everyone, but most people wouldn't have you know even noticed it. I think it's completely overrated just because it's one of the early songs, it's absolutely one of the weakest songs on that album. And um, the other one fits like a glove was such a classic through the 80s live <coughs> once again live once again live but uh, mm. even the studio version you know that riff alone kills it that riff alone blows let me know out of the water all the way you know fits like glove to me has always been a favorite uh, i think is uh, a cool gene song and this is actually an example i've heard the the demo version where gene is alone it's nothing spectacular but with a little help it become what we all know like fits like we have today and it's such a classic and if you were and if you saw it during gene simmons's 2018 uh, solo tour there it was one of the best songs live and i do <clears> go <throat> back to studio version from time to time and i still enjoy it and i think it's one of the heaviest songs from the non-makeup era so of course mm. it's fits like a glove Everyone in the audience disagrees with you. Thank you, yeah. audience. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, but, but but there we go. Um, and by the way, that isn't really a demo. That's a four track in a closet. Uh, yeah. Just a rough rough idea. Yeah. Um, I gotta go to Ken on that. Come on, Ken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ken. I love you know. I love it's like a glove. I think it's a cool song. Um, but. Up. Yeah, it's a gene song. That's a plus, always a plus. But uh, yeah, let me know is a great written, you know, catchy song. Um, very classic kiss. And it's a good song. It's a good cl hidden classic kind of off of the first album. So it's it's better than Fits Like a Glove. Though I like Fits Like a Glove. It was great in concert and all that good stuff. Um, great performance, but it's it, let me know is a better song in the end. I'm I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it. Uh, all right. Daniel just quit the show. Um <laughs> no, it, I love I love Let Me Know. It's a fantastic song. I think it's I think it's underrated. I wish the band would have played it 
played it more. Yeah. Because uh, because I really really like it. it. It's so catchy. It's it's so you know kind of kind of Beatlesque almost to a to an extent. Um, it fits like a glove is fun, but I can't pick it over over. Let me know. Let me know. It's is one of my favorite Kiss songs ever. Um, it, ha- it has to be. It's it's actually an easy pick at the end of the day. Let me know. Yeah. Okay. Mark. Um, I don't know. For me, it's a little bit more difficult because while I think "Let Me Know" is a you know pretty cool song, but again, it suffers from the first album thing to me a bit. It's a little, you know, weak production-wise. That song, and it, it it's good vocally and stuff. I think it's decent, but I mean, I have to also acknowledge one thing. I am a you know a guy who grew up loving the '80s stuff. Right. I mean, I, I love that whole, you know, blasting guitar, the Marshalls and the, that kind of sound when that when when it came out and Lick It Up was a pretty big record in my house, especially when my older sister, Jane, that that album was played a lot. OK, and it's like a glove. You know, I have to agree with Daniel has that great guitar riff at the beginning. And it's to me, I, I disagree. I can I can remember I can remember that song very easily. Very easily, I can remember that song. To me, I mean, let me know. I I, I can say I, I can remember it, but to me, it'd be almost a tie as far as what's memorable, as far as I'm concerned. But I, I think honestly, if I had to, you know, had a gun to my head, I would probably pick, you know, it's like a glove. To be honest with you, I think it just appeals to me more as a guitar player, and appeals to me more just as what when I gave, came into the kind of Kiss era at that time. I mean, when I first heard that, let, let me know, I kind of thought it was, you know, very, you know, 50 ish sounding to me compared to like something like that, like an 80 song, like, you know, fits like a glove. So I'm going with fits like a glove. Wow. I'm going to be the tiebreaker here. And this is so brutally difficult because I agree completely with Mark. Um, you know, fits like a glove we just had a great great refreshing kind of vibe and attitude on the lick it up album and while we're not allowed to talk about the live versions it's so central to the band um throughout the latter part of the 80s but sunday driver let me know written by paul stanley when he was 18 there are some of his songs which are just we talk about pure pop perfection and this is one that takes his influences with the harmonies it's so well crafted for someone so young he is the boy in the elder he has a glint in his eye and he dials in this absolutely glorious piece of pop perfection that is just as good as lover all i can or tomorrow um or even shout it out loud so i just don't know where to go with this one um and i'm looking i'm looking at the audience vote to sway me here and oh, don't do that <laughs> don't go suit and tie do. Julian. <laughs> don't go suit or tie don't be corporate um <laughs> then i'm gonna stick a knife in it and i'm going fits like a glove because it's Yay! just wow yes it's, it, yes. it, is so, it is so cheesy. It is so yeah. bad in parts. Brilliant. It is so glorious. It is so 80s. And that is when I became a fan. And as much as I love the Beatles. Uh, you, just yeah, went down a notch. you just went down a notch for me on that one. Julie, yeah. as a kiss fan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, hey, there, there, really, there are no winners in this. I can't believe I just did that. But there we go. Oh, oh my I, gosh. I let my... My heart rule yeah. on that one. All right. Who's Rise your heart. Rise your heart. Lonnie, you're going to be first up on this next matchup. All right. Ready. Ready. So save your love. Mm. Another poppy mm. song. Mm. Oh, fuck. Black Diamond. Oh. 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 oh, my. Oh, my. Black Diamond versus save your love, Lonnie. <sighs> yes. That's really tough because I really like Save Your Love. It is <laughs> so good. It is so good and so underrated. But I cannot pick it against Black Diamond because Black Diamond is, <clears throat> as much as I love Save Your Love, Black Diamond is a superior song. And it pains me that, that Save Your Love is 
is probably going to get eliminated right here because I think it is really, really great. But in this mm-hmm. matchup, I, I mean, there, there, I mean, Black Diamonds. It, it, I mean, <laughs> you guys haven't voted yet, but I mean, it's going to be tough to eliminate Black Diamond from this competition in general when you really get down to it. So, it, it's Black Diamond. It should be. I mean, technically, the last eighteen songs of this competition should be the set that they're playing now. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> all right, Ken. Yeah. Um, Black Diamond, I mean, just for the riff alone in that song, it wins <laughs> just by itself. Um, that's Black Diamond is my favorite Kiss song <clears throat> since the beginning. So, um, Save Your Love is a good song. It's, it's not a great song. It's it's just a, it's a good A song. I like it, but it's it's nothing compared to Black Diamond. Okay, Mark. A few weeks ago, I was on this live stream that I do. I'm thinking Ken frequents it sometimes, the Vinyl Archivist mm. live stream. On Sundays, we do a theme night, and we also do a sort of like a top five night. And we did top five favorite Kiss songs a few weeks ago. Mm, yeah. My number one Kiss song of all time is Black Diamond. It always has been, and it always will be, because it is, in fact, the, the most representative and best written Kiss song I think they've ever done. You start with Paul Stanley singing fantastic acoustic guitar part, clean guitar part in there on there. Then you come in with a fantastic riff that sounds very Gene-ish. The harmony vocals between Paul and Gene are fantastic in the chorus. And we get Peter Chris singing. And not only that, but we get an amazing Ace Freely guitar solo. Everything that's representative of Kiss in its finest is in this song. I don't know if they've ever topped this song. I I don't think mm. as far as writing and you know I mean when you when you close your show off and put all your big pyro stuff and your drum risers and everything to this song you know it, it's got to be a strong song and to me I think it is their strongest song. I love Save Your Love as well. I agree with Lonnie. I think it's one of the songs that make me love Dynasty. I mean Dynasty to me is the ultimate New York City record for a Kiss and that song reeks of new york city in it as well when he talks about all those you know all kinds of things in topic wise ace does on this record so i mean i love save your love uh but i think black diamond though is going to be hard to be eliminated like like julian said i think that might even go all the way to be the winner if you ask me yeah we'll have to wait and see and uh you know just to comment on a couple of these comments uh no uh we're not talking about the double platinum you know but some of those remixes are cool, but <clears throat> unfortunately, we're only talking about this in its first album form, which is tough when you weigh it up against the '73 demo as well. But I think it does sound good on, mm. on this on this on the '74 album. Joel, I'm, I'm putting your comment up for a third time because I think you nailed it when you introduce yeah. people to Kiss. Black Diamond should be the song that you play. In my opinion, it is the quintessential Kiss song that has everything you need to know about Kiss. That's that, actually what I said. Yeah. That, that really, yeah, yeah, Mark, that, I agree with you both. Uh, so, uh, Black Diamond for me. Who's left? Me. Daniel. Daniel. I think we could use Mark's speech there as a soundbite. He nailed it. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Black Diamond, I'm uh, guessing that it will be in the final against some song. Maybe mm. it will even win the whole competition at the end. It's such a great song. Even though I, I'm not sure the studio version is the best version, it's good enough. You know, you can, you get a hint of, of the greatness, even though, is it at the first album they have that prolonged ending? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the weakest part, you know. The, the ending is... Yeah, that wasn't It's, a good it's kind decision. of terrible. No, That's not a production. good decision. So if you want to hear a perfect version, you go to Tokyo 95, even though Eric go. Singer is singing that one. It's such a great performance, crisp sounding. So go on YouTube and found Tokyo 95. Such a great version. But Black Diamond, of course. All right. So we're unanimous. Um, you guys good for a couple more? Yeah. 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 yeah sure. Of All right. Good. No one's got any, any chores to do. All right. Next up. Yeah. Mark's like, Julian's gone over an hour. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> got to choose. Okay. Got to choose. 
Going up against. <laughs> Under the gun. Oh, this is another <laughs> hotter than hell animalized matchup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Mark, you get to go first on this. This will be interesting. Okay. Well, it, it's interesting because I remember when me and Daniel did our little guitar bit when we were playing uh, on for the Swedish podcast that he did. Uh, which thank you again, Daniel, for having me on that. That was really fun uh, doing that. We were we picked some of our favorite Kiss riffs on guitar to play, and I pulled this one out, got to choose. And when I played it, I remember Daniel told me at first that he wasn't really hip on the song, but after I played it for him, he was like, oh, I, I kind of like that riff. I, I'm going to go back and listen to it again now because it, it I think it's such a catchy, underrated riff and the main thing that i think hurts it initially is the production of hotter than hell it's just so muddy and stuff but if you were to hear them play it with a non-muddy muddy sound like i had fortunately and even if you listen to it under later tours like under revenge tour when they pulled it out there it sounds fantastic you know uh, i always thought that it was a great song uh you know it's not their greatest song but i think it's definitely a, a very catchy song memorable i love playing it on guitar uh under the Gun is an interesting song, but to me, it seems to be like one of those typical, prototypical Paul Stanley songs of that era, I find, where it's very fast and double kick in there and, you know, uh, Under the Gun. It's it's cool and it's it fits for that time. But I think that as far as a memorable song and a catchy guitar riff, I think Got to Choose is my vote. All right. Mark has choosed, chosen. Uh, John and David, thank you for joining. You guys uh, participated in the first Kiss FAQ live auction. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, Lonnie, got to choose or Under the Gun? Mm. Under the Gun's fine. It's just an 80s, like Mark said, it's just a very 80s sounding Kiss song. Um, just, just really fast and just trying to be hip for the times, I think, more than anything else. Well, but I and I love Got to Choose. I think it's a um, very, very good song. Um, it, it's Got to Choose for me. It's 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 such a fun song. I don't I don't I'm not in love with the version that's on Hotter Than Hell. And that's what we're talking about. But it's still, in my opinion, better than than Under the Gun. All right. Got to choose. Uh, Cecil, perfect comment there. I don't mind the crappy production on Hotter Than Hell. It adds raunchiness to the song. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Ken. Yeah, I got to go with uh, classic Kiss on this one. Uh, got to choose is uh, an enjoyable, cool, you know, cool song. Uh, Under the Gun, again, yeah, it's just kind of another one of those fast-paced uh, songs that Paul did in the 80s. Uh, yeah, like... Uh, um, one of us said it, about you know keeping up with the times, maybe the Lonnie. Mm. Um, so yeah, under the guns, okay. Got to choose is much better for me. All right, and that was a good comment. Under the gun is no masterpiece. Uh, no, <laughs> no it certainly isn't. But no. it showcase it showcases Eric Carr's double bass drumming really really <clears> for <throat> the air. Daniel, you'll appreciate under the gun, I'm sure. Yeah. You have to take into account when you entered the fandom. And for me, it was in 84, 85, somewhere around there. And Under the Gun, I immediately loved. Uh, I thought it was, you know, heavy, fast, cool guitars, cool ba drums, and great singing once again from Paul. Uh, he, he did some fantastic stuff on the Animalize album. And I don't know if you know this, but but over here in Sweden, Animalize was like the second wave for Kiss fandom. It, it was a yeah. huge hit, and uh, having some fire, you know, leading into in, into the success of the album. And for me, this album just um, you know blew my mind. And uh, when I went back through the catalog and, and found the earlier stuff, Got to Choose wasn't one of the standouts for me. Uh, I don't really care for the pro production. And when I think I've got your shoes, it's like the unplugged version of, or something like that. I never go back and listen to the studio version. Mm -hmm. So I have to give some love to, to uh, Under the Gun. 
because I think it's a, you know, they try to be hip and all that. And I actually think they managed to do that. It sounded current, it sounded cool, it sounded heavy, and it wasn't too far away from the Kiss sound. So, Under the Gun. Yeah. Yeah, I love Under the Gun, and I love the work tapes of it. I love the drumming, but I'm I'm not going against Got to Choose here, which is really a, it is a Kiss classic for me. Um, in my ranking, um, you know, it would have been nice for Under the Gun to come up with come up against the one of the songs. Well, one of the songs that's in the next lineup. We've got three uh, three um, song matchups left for this show. So uh, yeah, Got to Choose nearly unanimously, but thank you for one vote for uh, Under the Gun, Daniel. And you're absolutely right. It's all about when you got into the party. All right, next up, I Was Made for Loving You. Mm -hmm. back, to, back to the Stone Age. I, I, I think we can cycle through this one pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, Back to the Stone Age is I hate that song. Stuff yeah, like leave that goth through. Hate. Shame on us. It should be on. It, it, it sounds. I think I said this when we did it the last time. Like it sounds like it should be on like an episode of the Flintstones or something like that. It's just so ridiculous. Well, ma. So it, it's definitely. I was made for loving you. Yeah, it's Barney Rubble. All right, uh, Mark. Yeah, I mean, as much as I think was, I think I was one of the people I might have even put through back to the Stone Age, but in this situation though, I I, I think in, in rethinking it, I was made for loving you definitely deserves to go through if not just because of its you know importance in many ways of kind of you know keeping kiss alive in people's eyes and stuff like that so i'm gonna go with with i was made for loving you all right daniel i think it's kind of fun you know um we're going me and my family to see kiss two nights in a row in uh, what is it, four days now and um, i've tried to play some of the stuff for my children and the youngest one is she's 10 and she immediately caught on to I Was Made For Love You. There's just something about that song that attracts <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, it's, it starts humming along and all that. So um, there's something about I Was Made For Love You, even though I, of course, prefer the Live 3 version, which is awesome. You know, that version, mm -hmm. that's I Was Made For Loving You heavy metal style. That's a great version. If you guys should be listening to, to that version. But the studio one is okay, so I was made. Yeah, this just isn't even a matchup, Ken. I was made for loving you. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say nothing more. <laughs> yeah. What more is there to say, really, other than I apologize for that song even being put into a matchup? <laughs> All right, last two. Uh, last, last. We got one left after this. I get to go first here. Mm. I better hurry up. No, don't hurry. Domino. Okay. Ooh. Getting some revenge songs here today. Mm -hmm. Against Cold Gin. Mm. Sorry, Lonnie. This this oh, one's man. this one's gonna be tough. Um, oh, that tough. Cold gin. It's just, again, it's being played <laughs> on the end of the road tour. It's that says all you need to know about this is a song. The um production on the first album works. Ace's first real, you know, songwriting contribution to the band. And it, it's a great song then. It still works now. And if you just take the song and not everything that they tacked onto it, you know, it's uh, very enjoyable. Uh, Lonnie. I don't like, I don't like this. Um, I like Cold Gin. It's not one of my favorite classic Kiss songs, though. I like you it. Have, you don't have to vote for it. You can do whatever you want. You're free. Hmm. I'm going to vote Domino. I'm sorry. And you guys can call me that I'm a revenge apologist, but I like Dom I like Domino better. It's probably not going to go through, but I'm going to give I'm going to give the revenge song a little love here while I can. That's okay. I've got to change your vote to uh Cold Gin anyway. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, definitely in math. Never know with me. <laughs> Daniel. Dan, okay. Um, uh, talking about that episode that me and Mark did for the Let Me Know podcast, this was actually my top pick when it comes to Kiss riffs. Uh, the the thing will premiere actually, I think, on the 11th of August. If anyone wants to 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 watch that piece, uh, but uh, I just think the the riff alone wins this one for Colgin. 
I mean, when you grab a guitar, just playing that riff, it never gets old. Such a cool riff from Ace. And the song is kind of uh, autobiographical. You know, it, it talks about how Ace is and where he was at that time and where he was for a long time. You know, just need a court and uh, all that. Uh, so uh, And having so Gene sing it. Hmm. Yeah, that Ooh. that was a, a downer. Actually, I, I wish he would have. Yeah, I, I I wish that Ace could have sung that one because it's so, you know, mm. Gene as he is the sober guy. It, it's so. Yeah, it's know, ironic. It's, well. it's, it's ironic, you know, he's singing about being dumb, you know, drinking and stuff, and he's never <laughs> taken drink in his yeah. life. Yeah. So I would have actually preferred, even though Gene is a much better singer, I think it, it should have been an. Ace's vocal debut exactly. should have been Cold Jim because that's really his song. So You don't know what it's like to drink, Curly. Ah, ah. No, I think that was very unfortunate. I think he would have done a great job on that one if he had had the balls back then, but he, he had to wait until Love Gun before he mm. managed to sing some lead vocals. So Cold Jim time again, baby. All right, Mark, I'm sorry. Your vote doesn't really matter, but let's hear what you got to say. Gives you another opportunity to bash Ezrin. Actually, th th this this has nothing to do with bashing Ezrin th this time, because what? again, I'll refer back to that episode that I did on the vinyl uh, the vinyl archivist podcast, that the top five Kiss songs episode, and Cold Gin was in it for me, okay. and Cold Gin was has is a song just like Daniel said too, that guitar riff. I remember when I first started playing guitar. Okay, I had a copy Les Paul. That my Jane, my Jane, my sister had a long time ago, and I pulled it out and it just reminded me of Kiss immediately because I remember when I had a live and I opened that booklet and they had the, that great picture of Ace playing that Les Paul in front of the Marshalls. There, it's like, oh, we have a Les Paul. So, of course, the first thing to learn was a Kiss song, and that was one of the first ones that I actually learned. And it's not a difficult riff, but it doesn't have to be difficult to be good. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't have to play a Dream Theater song to 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 make a great song. You know. So I think that Cool Gin is a song that has gone through the ages, has survived a lot of their different eras. If you think about it, what other song has been played in the 70s and fit in just as well in the 80s in their set list? Cool Gin, for sure. And the 90s, you know, and the 2000s. So uh, while it has been overplayed to death, I can agree with that part for, from Lonnie's end of it. Uh, I still like it better and Domino, and uh, but I will say Domino is probably one of the songs that I really do dig off of Revenge, uh, and I don't think that Bob did too much to ruin that one. Okay, all right, Cole Jin goes through it in our last. I didn't even get a vote, didn't you? No, he didn't, he did not. Ken, did oh, I'm vote. sorry, Ken. <laughs> it's Come gonna on. be, uh, yeah, I love. I love Domino, I think it's a great song. Um, one of my favorites off of Revenge. I think it's a very cool song, different and cool. Um, but uh, yeah, Cold Gin it was is great. Um, the thing about Cold Gin is, and also, you know, the Gene vocals on that song. If you really listen to him, they sound he he sounds like he's trying to sound like a drunk person singing that. If you ever hear his vocals, a little different, and I, I always feel he's trying to slur a little bit and that sort of thing in that song, even though he's never been drunk he also wrote the middle section that bridge section and stuck that in there uh for ace though he didn't take the writing credit on that um but uh it's it's a great song called gin it's classic uh classic riff um so it's gonna win good that's what i wrote down for you before you voted i figured yeah you figured you knew what i was gonna pick anyway, so. all right last matchup for today and last part of the show is hard luck woman Versus not for the Ooh. innocents. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So uh, be, because I abused you so badly there, Cad, uh, go first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then I won't forget you. I'll forget someone else. No doubt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, you know, these are two songs I love very, very much. Hard Luck Woman, I think, is a great written song. Try, trying to sound like, you know, of course, the Rod Stewart style of like Maggie May and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, great vocal by Paul, I mean, Peter, sorry. Uh, Paul wrote it. Um, but Not For The Innocent is so, you know, that mean and dirty and all that stuff. I love, it just digs in and, and goes and 
it's just a groove that's in it and and gene's vocals just powerful song one of my favorite songs off of look it up obviously uh so i'm gonna go i'm actually gonna go with not for the innocent because maybe because i've heard hard work women a million times but i'm gonna go with not for the innocent i, I just love that song to death all right lonnie we'll see you mm. Not for the innocence, fun and it's good. And hard luck woman is so different from not from the innocent. Again, like it's what again, it's what's, what's so much fun about being a Kiss fan is, is that two songs from the same band that are so different from one another. But I love them both. Yeah, and that's what that's what's so fun about being a Kiss fan. Yep. Um, but I'm gonna go hard luck woman over not for the innocent. I think hard luck woman is really really great and peter does such an excellent job on it that i i can't not pick it mark i don't want to wake up shadow who i hear snoring <laughs> what, yeah what, he's what, what's your pick yeah he's really snoring away here uh i I'm, I'm gonna say that uh while i think you know uh not i think not for the innocent it's something about that song has always kind of struck me. And I've always loved that original version when they where they split the vocal between Paul and Gene. I always thought that they should have kept it that way on the Lick It Up version. But I still think overall, uh, Not For The Innocent sits really good with me, mainly because, like I said, I bought a 45 when I was really young of Lick It Up, and the B-side of it was Not For The Innocent. And mm. I remember playing that B-side a lot more, actually, after a while than the Lick It Up. I actually like that a lot better. And while I like Hard Luck Woman, you know, uh, I'm not big on Rod Stewart. I mean, I think he's excellent with Jeff Beck. I thought he did a great job on that stuff, but I'm uh, not too big on Rod. So I'm going to go with Not for the Innocent. Wow. This is getting really interesting when we start talking about people's entry point into fandom. Daniel? Not for the Innocent is how I like my gene. No mean. Uh, brutal, uh, dark. Uh, I actually love the lyrics and how he sings it. One of his most brutal performances. I think he sounds so sinister in that song. Uh, and even though I like the version that we got to hear a bit later on with Paul on it, I still think that I, I like Gene throughout this song because it's such a Gene song. You know, it, it goes... Uh, uh, it's it's in the you know like God of Thunder or Unholy or something like that. I, I think it's one of those songs, and I, I don't want Paul on that because I only want Gene on this one. And it's such a brilliant song, mm. even though I enjoy the other version. I think this is this is the one I prefer. Uh, Hard Luck Woman is a great Rod Stewart song. I don't think it's a Kiss song really. Uh, I'm not too fond of it. I think it, it, Paul has written a whole lot, a bunch of better ballads than, than that one. Uh, even though I enjoy Peter Chris's vocals on that one. Uh, I, so I have to go with Not for the Innocent. Wow. I did not see that coming. This is always full of surprises. My, yeah. my, opinion, my opinion doesn't matter now. Um, and I would have gone with Hard Luck Woman anyway because I love Peter's vocal on that. Yeah. And I really think that not for the innocent i like the uh split version better than um than the version on lick it up but there we go you never know what's going to happen in these matchups we've caught up today with two rounds in one one to fix julian math the other to get the first round uh the first matchup of round two going so we've had a lot of commentary from people who've joined us live today we don't usually do shows this long so i want to thank uh daniel mark lonnie and ken for staying on for so long and for all of you staying with us for so long so we'll be back next week and when it's all about me that's uh the next topic uh if i get the freaking list together so uh for now from mark from daniel from ken uh lonnie and myself thanks for joining us and we shall see you next time thank you for spending time listening to the kiss faq podcast today all sales are final there are no refunds if you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.